Hello. I'm Ben. And I'm Ben. We are the Nay <laughs> Bands. <laughs> yeah! All right, let's bring it on. Neighbors. Everybody needs good neighbors. With a little understanding. You can find the perfect blend. Hello. Beth. Hello. How you doing? I mean, pretty damn jazzy. How are you doing? Very good. Very excited. We're, we're like moments away from new episodes of Neighbours Landing. Enjoy. On Amazon Freebie, Amazon Prime here in Canada. Uh, I cannot wait. Here's to a life filled with health, happiness and lots of laughs. Me too. I'm like, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. So anyway, to just stem that excitement and to just give us something to focus on so that we just don't sit staring at the TV for the next, or computer, depending on how you're going to watch it, for the next couple of weeks. Ben, what are we doing? We're, we're looking back at characters of uh, other eras gone by, inspired by, um, well, there was a little bit of a, a backlash to one of our recent episodes. We made a joke about the Hancocks. Evan Hancock? Yeah. Well, yes, I, I remember most of them, but, oh. We kind of implied that they were a bit dull. And um, a few people weren't happy about it. Right. Oh, don't be unkind. <laughs> Someone tweeted us, Fiona tweeted us. Do we still tweet? X. Uh, Fiona saying that she she had a real thing for Evan Hancock. Who were misses? <laughs> you dirty dog. Oh. So inspired by Fiona's confession, we thought perhaps we should look back on some of the characters that we haven't really talked about, characters that uh, deserve more attention. And we've come together to compile a list. Yeah. Starting with the big one, Sienna Caminetti. No, thanks. No, no. It's, surely it's Lisa Elliott first. <laughs> Are you meant to go, who? Lisa Elliott. Who? Don't you do that to me then, because you'll have me down as being an absolute neighbours non-know-it-all when actually I remember Lisa Elliott very well, thank you very much. All right, tell me five facts about Lisa Elliott. This is going to be a good contest. You're really turning up the heat. Okay, she was a teacher at Erinsborough High. She lived with Sarah Beaumont. Oh. She had lots of scenes with Lou. Her name was Lisa. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's four. Four out of five ain't bad. You can you name me another moment, Lisa Elliott moment? Well, she was a big netball freak. Didn't she have a pash with Ben? They had a oh, frisson. She did not pash me. <laughs> no <laughs> pashes with Lisa Elliott has happened on these. If you wish to make wild accusations against me. And, you know, she rocked a curly blonde mop. Okay. Well, between us, we kind of, we've kind of got the, the, the gist of... I think that's it. End of episode. We're done. <laughs> okay. So, moving on swiftly from that one. Um, ben, where should we start? Ooh. I don't know. Let's... I don't know, someone we've not really talked about who, I don't know, who played a major role during my teenage years was Rick Alessi. Oh, I wonder what role he played.
I looked up to his um Like Ricky Lassie, like he was huge in the mid early mid nineties, and we've barely barely given him a mention. Yeah, it's a bit of a spin out, isn't it? My bestie absolutely adored Ricky Lassie and Dan Falzon. Yeah, she had a proper squash in him, just like you. And also, he's kind of linked to heritage characters because he is cousin of Christina Alessi slash Robinson slash Hello Robinsons. You know, he was having a bit with Cordy Willis. Yeah. So that kind of links him into another family. Yeah. Well, also he he was part. He did have a whole family around him when he first arrived. He had Marco, Kathy, Meg Morris he... from Prisoner Cell Block H. Yeah. Heir to the Kathy's secret source empire. <laughs> she had a secret. <laughs> she did. She She's had a Rickalesi's secret source. <laughs> That's gross. But Rick was basically the heartthrob of, of Neighbours at the time. Hey, 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 it's a tough life being a supermodel, mate. Yeah. A lot of the stories revolved around him. He was always involved in some sort of romance. Like you say, with Debbie Martin was his, perhaps his first big romance. Is it the maths you like or a certain student called Debbie Martin? Fine. Right. For, it was forbidden. Kathy and <laughs> be kind, Ben. Be kind. Tamani Reese Warren's eyebrows. How rude. Boss Debs. But do you remember Debbie and Rick won that holiday to go to London to see Michael Jackson? Oh, did Helen go with them as well and ended up laid up for the whole time? Probably because they couldn't afford the budget of three actors in London. Yeah, she. Helen went to London, but she never left the hotel room, which was conveniently still at another wedding. So, oh. I mean, you'd be pretty devastated to go all the way to London and not, not leave the hotel room. But, you know, Helen's, she's cashed up. She doesn't care. She can go again. Yeah, she's the mother of Rosemary. You know, Rosemary can just bling her on a private jet wherever she wants to go. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, they went to London to see Michael Jackson and they ended up on a chat show because they gave away their Michael Jackson tickets to a kid they met. I don't know what was, was he poor? There was something wrong with him. But when we met Terry... Uh, this is Terry Carter, a young leukaemia victim. So they gave their tickets to Michael Jackson. But still like Michael Jackson better. I wanted to get tickets for this concert, but they're sold out. Still get them, if you know the right people. They cost money. Yeah, Rick, Rick was was pr pretty much the centre of the Neighbours universe. And even though his family left and he was left behind to live. Who did he live with? Was it Lou? He, Lou, Lou and Lauren. Yeah. Or G. Lauren. Yeah, and he kind of became Lou's sort of protege in the in the business world and because Rick was always trying to make a bit of money and he took over the coffee shop. I, there were all sorts of moments. He went through highs and lows. There was that big car crash he was involved in with Cody, Danny, and I think it was Briggs. Hooper, and given his statement and the one that Rick gave us himself, we're charging Rick with reckless driving. What? One of them died. Yes. One of them died in the car crash. Danny, uh, uh, Gary, Gary Briggs was killed. <laughs> Remember which that. kind of sparked off Cody's ambition to become a doctor because she failed to give CPR. Could I have revived you if I'd known what to do? Possibly, yeah. She hadn't met Dr. Carl then, had she? She didn't know how to deal with accidents in the moment. Even though she hadn't met Dr. Carl, she was kind of channeling Dr. Carl because the patient died on the scene. Oh, Carl. I've always said that what we needed was a doctor around here. Now, when I collapse from overwork, oh, all they have to do is wheel me across the courtyard. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh, Mum! 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 You know, she was doing pretty well by his standards. She didn't kill him. Good one, Cordy. <laughs> So my favourite Rick Alessi moment, I think, would be the debt ball. Oh, yes. Oh, the brawl. big brawl. 
Shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. Look, it's not my fault you can't sing. So well, you were the one who was too gutless to tell me I'm wrong. Look at the way you're doing it. You're just like a real bitch. 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 Yeah, it was proper savage, wasn't it? There was frocks being ripped and hair being tussled and just a big old bar brawl in the middle of a school dance. And, but I just find it quite odd that, like, who takes their mum and their nana and their, their granddad to the dance? Because it wasn't Helen there and Julie was there. And it's like, Christ, nobody would want that at a school disco, would they? Your mum sat in the corner while you're, you know, trying to do the Macarena. <laughs> but it was all a bit old fashioned, wasn't it? Because I think the idea of a debutante ball is that you're presenting the young women to the to the community. These are the next generation of baby bearing women. Ben Packer was amongst those baby bearing women. <laughs> she, she might have been. She might have been packing something in that womb of hers. I don't know. <laughs> Across the line. Who's next, Ben? I'm going to go with a bit of a curveball here. Whenever we say the Parkers, we all go, oh. I don't want to hear it. But with the Parkers came Miranda's fierce and fabulous sister, Nicola. Ooh. Do you remember? Great choice. Great choice. She was, yeah, she started off. Like she came in as um, Riley's her nephew's secret lover. I mean, I mean, come on! I mean, a neighbours has been no stranger to incest over the years. What with Lucy and Glenn. <laughs> Serena Bishop and Luca. I want you to be the first and the only one. And then obviously in the latter years, we've had the old Tanaka, Robinson. Yeah, and Amy, and what Amy trying to get off with both her half-brothers. Well, not trying, she did. It's okay. He Rowan is your brother. What? <laughs> but these weren't actually relit by blood but it was still weird it was still weird yeah they were adopted weren't they they were adopted by Stephen Miranda but still you don't neck on with your your sister's adopted son it's a bit it was a bit icky wasn't it and yeah. then she had a bit with Steve talk about keeping it in the family oh yeah she did <laughs> she didn't look very far for uh, her romantic interest did she it's just a bit of fun relax oh, you're a bad influence on me <sighs> No, you're the bad boy, Steve Parker. Don't want to go down the pub. No, I'll just, I'll just look around the living room. Forget that you seduced my son. Forget that you're in love with my husband. Oh. Come on, Granddad. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is, is that incest was probably the least problematic of all of her crimes. Oh, yeah. Well, you say Nicola West, there's one word that comes to mind. Lasagna. Lasagna, you said that you liked it, so... Yeah, I do. I know someone else who's a fan. <laughs> it's my favourite. Lasagna. Need I say any more? What a ride that story was. That's messed up. I know. I think Neighbours was G-rated in Australia, so they were quite restricted with the words and the actions and the uh, violence. Anything sex, nudity, they were very restricted. Are you sure about that? Who's a chicken? And I reckon he's had a joint before. Well, there's always a first time for everything. I know what kind of secretary I'd rather have sitting on my knee. <laughs> so you and Grandpa never, you know, before you got married. We got pretty thick walls here. <laughs> Daphne's a stripper. Mm -hmm. Copulation, propagation. When we did it before, we just called it plain old thing. She's told the entire neighbourhood I'm a raving sex maniac. Why don't you pop into the bedroom and slip your clothes off? Pardon? What? We learned that we couldn't live without sex. Well, you wouldn't read about it. It was about your G-spot, you know? Believe me, once you start to give in to their desires, they are never satisfied. I think what was meant to happen was Nicola had... She kind of thought, well, if 
I can't have Steve. No one's going to have Steve. And she poisoned a lasagna. The way it came across on screen, it, it looked like she'd given Steve some lasagna that had been left out the fridge a bit too long. <laughs> so you kind of, as a viewer, you were kind of like, I don't understand. Like, he's just eating some out of date lasagna. Why is everyone. Yeah, have got any antacids? Uh, yeah, top left shelf. Well, I hope it wasn't the food. I mean, 20 years later, you've got Nanny Alice, like, literally, like... Oh, you could not get two different stories there. Same story, it's totally different. I know. But we have to do a little honourable mention to the original Poisonous um, Vixen story, Eileen Clark and the Salmon Moose. Oh, look, the salmon, the leftover salmon. This will be fine. Uh, I think Dev said we should throw that out. Oh, nonsense, it's perfectly all right. I'll put some more cans with it. <laughs> A salmon moose. Oh, that was killed a cat, didn't that? How long does it take for a cat to die of food poisoning? And Mrs. Mangle's been sick since last night. She had some of the moose for dinner. What are you suggesting? My salmon moose? Oh, don't be absurd. Or it, did, it turned out it didn't kill the cat. The no. cat died of, you know, natural causes. But her moose was was prime suspect. Did they say what the poison? I mean, how long before they'd know? Well, they knew straight away, the appendicitis. What? But anyway, back to Nicola. So then there was all that, like, poison gear. Then Donna ran her over, or Margot Robbie. Let me get up the road! <laughs> and then she did, went all amnesia. Who's that? It's Steve, see? <laughs> Who? I don't, I don't know him. Or pretend amnesia, didn't she? You know, because well, we know how our neighbours loves an amnesia story. Then yeah. she got all confused and thought she was Miranda. My name is Miranda Parker, and please, I would like to speak to my husband Steve. Did she was she confused? I don't know. She knocked Miranda over. There was this stops right here. Ah! There was another brawl and ended up getting carted off in the back of a paddy wagon. I mean, that was a dramatic moment, wasn't it? Yeah. And the actress who played Nicola, you, she started off, you could tell she was kind of like model turned actress. But by the end of her six months, she was one of the best actors on, on the show. <sighs> and it was so sad to have to lose her and keep Miranda. Don't go there. So I would say an honourable mention to old Nicola West. Absolutely. Well, who else? I think we don't need to look that far in, in the past. We, I think last year we had what could have been, if the show hadn't ended so suddenly, what could have been one of the best characters in Neighbours history, and that was Freya. What? But what about me? Oh, that is a good choice. Yeah, because I think if she doesn't, come, we don't know, she may may or may not come back, but if she doesn't come back, her time on the show is very short, so she's potentially, as the years go by, she's someone who could be forgotten, but she packed in so much. And the actress, Phoebe, Phoebe Roberts, was stunning. She raised the bar for everybody else, I thought. Look at Levi. From an acting perspective, it was when she came onto the scene and he was pitched with her and all of a sudden like he just went Whoa. I will Thanks take that you. Thank you. the chemistry but when he was paired up with B the the two of them had no chemistry together as a as a couple so B you're a local too <sighs> don't you have actual police work to do you saw what he did to the billy cart he's upset you should see what he did to the billy cart but him and Freya it was sizzling the atmosphere's electric. Morning. 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 That, you know, do you remember when he came in the, um, in the police car and with the, on the tan eye? Can you please come out? This is the police. Please come out with your hand off. There was just a real sense of heat there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then she was involved in all that story with David. 
and the murder or murder do we call it a murder? it's just another doctor doing a dodgy deed isn't it he can't survive this You know, you I mean, Carl do... Kennedy was, was his peer, so you know. I'm sure he did everything possible. I gave Cheryl an injection to ease pain, but I think that's what might have killed her. He's just following by example. And, you know, you'd do that for old Aaron, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you could have just said, I was so traumatised by my husband getting bashed to death that... He just... I didn't feel like I was in the right headspace to save this patient, but, you know, he went to prison. Well, I mean, he was always a little bit of a, you know, a bit of an honest Henry all the time, wasn't he? Old Tanaka, but hey-ho, hey-ho. It was still, it was good viewing, and Freya was involved in that. That was this, that was a shame. We didn't get any of the backstory, because I really wanted more. And the way they brought her in... If you remember, it was after Roxy and Carl's wedding. Yeah, and she was there looking for a scarf. I mean, I still don't really understand the significance of the scarf. I, I just feel like there was so much more that was going to come from that. As well as all the dramatic stuff, she was great at the comedy. And she had that real... They started. They set up this kind of girl house share with Chloe and Mackenzie and Kiri. And the chemistry there was was fantastic as well. And that was shaping up to be an iconic household. We've always said this, that neighbours do friendships very well. And that you had a real sense of camaraderie and girl power under one house. It was great. Freya, you came and you went too soon. Well, yes, it was. <laughs> So, Do you other honourable mentions? Can we think of anybody else, Benjamin? Well, I feel like Annalise Hartman is someone who is a very memorable character. And she did it all in her years on, on Neighbours. She went from like Goldinger, you know, patching with Lou. Hey, yeah. Oh, God, that was a uh, school bully, bullying Julie Martin, who'd gone back to school. Then she ran the coffee shop. She became a poet. What's with the glasses and all the rhyming stuff? I'm a poet. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Her dad was a drag queen. She got jilted at the altar. She was in a plane crash. She had a long lost sister. I don't understand. She did it all. He got a little crazy. And then she copped off with bloody Stoney Rebecca. I can't believe you would you would have an affair with Stoney when you've got Sam Kratz. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, oh. Stoney. Yeah. Well, well, well. <laughs> Stoney in those boxes. I certainly don't call that Christian behaviour. I'll stick with Sam Kratz, thanks. I mean, Sam Kratz too. What kind of a pervert are you anyway? Uh, any other honourable... Mentions? Brenda. Do you remember Brenda Carpenter? Brenda Riley, yeah. Brenda Me. Riley, sorry, not Brenda Carpenter. But she was Lou's sister, yeah. who was just a bit of a that larrikin, Aussie life and soul. She was like basically the female Lou, wasn't she? As if I would stoop so low. Why would I arrange for a bunch of drongos to call on the old chul? When she came to run the coffee shop when Madge and Harold were going off on their big world tour in the camper van. Man. Oh, man. Take it from me, keep him happy no matter what. A good man's hard to find these days. We all Which know what happened it. then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, so she was almost a bit like a Madge character in, in her. I think that's the way she was meant to brought in to be this like larger than life, a Borgness, you know, that edge. And um, tried to... Um, steal Doug away from Pam. Oh, what old, you silly duffer. Well, thanks for the company. Sadly for Brenda, she did not succeed. Yeah, she was no Jill Weir. <laughs> oh, Jill Weir. Oh. Hello, Doug. What are you doing here? Oh, didn't Pam tell you? I'm living here now. 
and she had but she had a really lovely friendship with Dorothy as well, which I quite liked as well. And they were kind of two polar opposites. Dorothy Burke, I'll give you something to crow about, you old bat. Here we go. Yes, it's Dorothy Burke. But there was a real sense of friendship there as well. Five out of 20, correct. Oh, come on, I didn't do that badly. I'm afraid you did. Total washout. I mean, but we could go on, couldn't we? Oh, yeah, we'd be here all day naming our underrated characters. I mean, what about you guys? Who are yours? So we know Fiona's and her Evan Hancock, but we want to know who is your underrated crush, shall we say? Not that these have been our crushes, but your underrated um, favourite characters from the show. Yeah, tell us in the comments below and we'll share them online. Give us a like, give us a subscribe on YouTube. On Instagram, Facebook and X. Twitter. Well, soon we'll have lots of new characters to talk about as well. Cannot wait. Bye-bye. <laughs>